أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين إلى قيام يوم الدين رب شح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Brothers and sisters in Islam, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In our previous video, we mentioned details regarding the Khums year. And we've understood until now that when we buy a specific item, if we need the item, remember we explained the meaning of need in uh, one of the previous videos, if we actually need the item, and we use it, then we don't have to pay the khums of that specific item. Here, we need to keep a few points in mind. Number one, we're supposing that the value of the item does not change by the end of the khums year. For if the value changes, as in the value changes in a way where the the value of the item rises or the price of the item rises by the end of the Khums year. Here we have a detailed verdict. Sayyidah Sassan Damadullah and other maraja present a detailed verdict that mentions different scenarios and each scenario has its own uh, has its own verdict or its own law. Hence for now we're considering that, or we're supposing that, the item we buy, its value remains as it was up until the end of the Khums year. The second point we need to keep in mind is that we have two types of items. Items that are not consumed when used, and items that are consumed when used. Is, is there a difference between the two regarding khums? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Hence, we're going to uh, speak in detail about these items and the laws of khums that, uh, that pertain to these two types of items. Let's start with the first type. We said the first type is what? An item that is not consumed when used. As in, when you use it, uh, you don't consume it or you don't consume part of it. The item remains in existence in its initial form. In its initial form. Yes, with time, the condition of that item might change. The quality of it might change. But the item itself will remain in existence in its initial form, in the form it held when you bought it or gained it. Let me give you an example. Take the example of clothing. You buy a shirt and you use it twice, thrice, multiple times. After using it, after actually wearing that shirt, do you consume the shirt? Is the shirt consumed? Is part of it consumed? No. The shirt remains in existence in its initial form. Yes, the condition of the shirt might worsen. The, the quality of the shirt might worsen, but it remains in its initial form. The same applies to what? To, for example, your car or your couch. When you buy a couch, you sit on it or you lie on it after sitting on it for quite a while or lying on it for quite a while. Do you actually realize, do you realize that the couch has been consumed? No, you don't consume the couch, right? You don't consume it or consume part of it. The couch remains in existence in its initial form. Yes, the condition of the couch might worsen or the quality might worsen. But at the end of the day, the couch itself remains in its initial form. 
So, when speaking about such items, items that are not consumed when used, what is the ruling regarding khums? As long as you need that item and you use it, meaning you use it to a significant extent, you don't have to pay its khums by the end of the khums year. But what if I become unneedy of that item before the end of the khums year? For example, I buy skates. Now, when you use skates, you don't consume them, right? I buy skates and I use the skates once or twice or thrice. And then I become unneedy of these skates before the end of the khums year. Such that I know I will not need the skates for the rest of the, uh, the homes here. And I will not need these skates during, uh, during the upcoming years. In this case, do I have to pay homes on the skates? Yes, you do. Said Stani says, based on mandatory precaution, you have to pay the homes of the skates. Why? Because you, beca you became unneedy of these skates before the end of the Khums year. Had you become unneedy of the skates after the end of the Khums year, you wouldn't pay Khums on it, on it. You would not pay Khums on the skates. So there's a, there's a difference between becoming unneedy of a particular item before the end of the Khums year and after the end of the Khums year. Bear in mind, there are certain items that you become unneedy of during the Khums year, but you know you will need them in the upcoming years. You'll need them in the upcoming years. You won't have to pay Khums on those items as long as you actually use them, as long as you actually need them and use them. An example of that is uh, winter clothes. Your winter clothes are worn when? During the winter, right? You don't wear them during the summer. So if you use the, the, the winter clothes during the winter and you become unneedy of these clothes during the remainder of the year, you don't have to pay the homes of those clothes. Why? Because you know that you're going to need them in the upcoming year or the upcoming years during winter so this is what we need to know regarding items that are not consumed when used here we move to the second type of items items that are consumed when used you consume it as in you consume the whole item or part of it when you use it an example of that there are many examples by the way an example of that is uh, lotion, when you use lotion, what happens? Your skin absorbs the lotion, correct? An example of that is, uh, for example, apples, oranges, bananas, olive oil, uh, flour, the flour that we use to make dough, so on and so forth. We have a lot of examples, especially regarding foods and drinks. What is the Khums ruling regarding these items? Basically, Sayyid al-Sistan Damadullah tells us that concerning the items that are consumed when used, if you consume part of that item, you still have to pay khums on the other part, the part that has not been consumed. Why? Because technically you did not use it. You didn't use that part. As long as that specific part has financial value, you have to pay its homes. Let me give you several examples to clarify this verdict. Let's go back to lotion. You have a bottle of lotion and you use one quarter of that bottle. By the end of the homes here, you still have three quarters of the lotion bottle filled with lotion. That lotion has financial value. It has financial value. Now, you might say that, you know, uh, it's not as expensive anymore because it's part of a used bottle. Sure, no problem. Possibly the value of the lotion dropped because it's part of a used bottle of lotion. But at the end of the day, it has financial value. 
so you need to pay khums on it. But I used one quarter of the bottle. Yes, and you did not use three quarters of the bottle. That amount of lotion is not used. Hence, you have to pay its khums. Another example is, uh, as we said, olive oil. A lot of us, especially Arabic families, uh, have containers of olive oil. By the end of the khums year, usually there is a remainder, there is a good amount of olive oil left in the house. That olive oil hasn't been consumed, which means, which means it hasn't been used, which means you have to pay its khums. The same applies to sugar. Usually we buy large amounts of sugar, right? Or suppose large amounts of honey. And by the end of the year, we have a good amount of sugar or a good amount of honey stored in the house. That sugar or that honey has financial value, so you have to pay its homes because it's not used. The same applies to gasoline. You buy gasoline, right? Um, and by the end of the homes year, you might have gasoline in your house in specific containers, or you might have gasoline in the car right as long as there is financial value for that gasoline there's financial value for it as in there's a, a a good amount of gasoline such that you could actually sell it right in the market then you have to pay homes on it yes if there was a minimal amount of that specific product a minimal amount a very minimal amount of gasoline or a very minimal amount of lotion or olive oil or honey such that it doesn't have financial value this is the key statement such that it doesn't have financial value then you won't have to pay khums on it but again remember it uh, must be so minimal it doesn't have financial value so concerning the second type of items the items that are consumed when used, if you use part of that item, as in you consume part of it, you still have to pay khums on the part that isn't consumed as long as it has financial value. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu ala al-Mustafa Muhammad wa alihi al-Tahirin.